Propaganda was a tool uh, during World War One and Two, and it's been, it's been a tool that's been very well used for for many years. It's a it's a well known tool. Hitler understood the value of propaganda and he used it brilliantly. Uh, he was extremely smart in a lot of the posters that he brought, and he 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 knew how to row, rowdy up the crowds. You know, to bring the crowds together and do the high Hitlers and to to do the songs and the hymns together and to march together. He, he knew how, what colors to use and, and the posters that he had up. And he knew how to uh, set people's minds against, uh, let's say, the Jews and the Bolsheviks uh, and the propaganda that they used. And propaganda was, was brilliantly used as well in the United States and Canada to bring us into the war, um, just, just playing on our feelings. And that's, that's not even back in the day where we had uh, the videos like of actual brutal murders happening. So just by pictures and posters and radio programs, they were able to, to change, the, uh, change the, the ideas of the whole nation and, and playing with their feelings and turning. And I'm not saying necessarily that at that point that uh, the West should not have gotten involved in, in what was happening in Germany. I'm just saying, like, uh, at first they were not going to. It was the policy of the United States specifically, I think, that, that to not be involved in, in overseas wars and stuff. And uh, that changed because of the propaganda and of, of, of the, these, you know, the baby on the bayonet uh, type, you know, posters that they had up, you know, that, that dealt with people's feelings. Governments have known how to use propaganda for a long time, and they've it, they've become brilliant at it. And this, all this Facebook and Twitter and all this is also uh, it's even the creators of these uh, programs and these tablets and stuff. I mean, they 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 say right out that this is uh, you using people. It's 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 changing the way people think. It's using dopamine, like every time you get this this uh, like and all this hatred that goes on, it's like it it produces dopamine in you, and and so there's propaganda is huge right now, and and we are absolutely being uh, just used by media, and and we can see this everywhere, like nonsense is happening everywhere, and the media is calling good bad and bad good. And they're they're flipping the narrative like you know just just people standing in front of a burning building and saying oh no the, the protests are are peaceful you know like just just twisting everything and they're showing you and they're teaching you what they want you to hear and what they, how they want you to react and so this propaganda is absolutely huge and people are absolutely not thinking anymore they're just reacting to feelings and and that is important for us to go down to the facts you know facts are actually being censored right now you know some some somebody tweets out uh the the fbi data on how many people have been killed last year and stuff and and that is being censored by twitter and censored by facebook you can't even they don't want you to be looking at data they don't want you to be thinking about what is actually happening they want you to get into this race war, ethnicity against ethnicity. They want you to hate. They want you to, they're pointing you to the problems they want you to, to show as a problem. They don't want us to talk about this. They don't want us to have civil converse, conversations about the problems. There are problems. I, I, I don't doubt that there is racism. There's racism in every single country in this world. When the media points to all police being bad, and they're trying to center all policemen. Well, that is craziness. It's absolutely craziness to say that everybody would be bad. Sure, there are bad ones in there. You know, my wife who came from Asia, she has faced more racism in her country by her own people than she has come here. When she came here, she has peace and she, she loves it here because people, uh, she loves it here specifically because people do not care about your skin color. And they treat her the same as anyone else. And they, they don't care if you're, you're black or white or whatever. You know, they don't care about it. And she's felt more freedom here in Canada than anywhere else in the world. And if she has faced any racism here in Canada, it often comes from her own people and Asian people. And so it's incredible 
uh, that we are no longer allowed to talk about these things uh, without being insulted. We're scared to even approach this. And I think we, we should not be scared to approach these issues. We need to speak out. And we, we definitely don't need to hate, but we need, do need to speak out because it is very important that our words have power. Truth has power. That is why they try to censor one, one, one part of, of truth. And that is why the media tries to censor certain things, because they know that words have power. They know that ideas have power. And if we can share ideas and enough people believe in it, and enough of people say, yeah, no, I believe that. I think this is true. Then there's a huge amount of power behind that. And so if they can stop the narrative that they do not like from being spread and only feed you what they want you to hear, then they can control us. And so this is why I think everybody should speak up, whether it be the popular thing to be saying or not. And we should not stop loving each other. This is another thing that the media is actually teaching you. The media is teaching even children, okay, the, the Canadian Broadcasting a Channel, the news, um, they, they taught children how to censor their fathers. Of course, it's not their mothers, their fathers. If their fathers uh, teach them this and that, you know, uh, it could be about global warming. It could be about the source of this uh, COVID-19. It could be all, all these things. Well, this is how you should react. This is how you should make them be quiet. They're teaching you how to censor a certain um, thought. And that is just so dangerous. Uh, we do not break our relationships just because we don't believe in the same thing. Uh, we don't stop talking to people just because we don't believe the same thing. Um, but we personally have to have civil conversations and we need to, be, to, to not be scared to share what we believe is true. We should not submit to those who are trying to censor us and by, by calling us you know, racist and calling us this or that. You know, it doesn't matter what they say. We, we, we should be brave enough to speak up. The general direction of the world is not to be trusted. I believe this is a big problem even in the church is this this belief that our general the general direction that our government is taking the general direction that our world is taking that the science is taking us is good and that we're generally a good uh, moral community. And this is another thing that we see in World War II right before World War II is that 97% uh, of the people in Germany called themselves Christians. And I think it was one-third of them were Catholics. Two-thirds were called Protestant. And even the general direction that a 97% Christian nation was taking was the wrong direction. <laughs> and this is exactly what's going to happen again, is that we think we're taking the right direction. And, uh, and all I want to say is be very careful in thinking that the direction we're taking is a good one. And, and uh, it, it's... It's rarely a good one. And we know for a fact that the Bible teaches that the, world, uh, the world's direction and the church's direction are opposite. They will never match up. They will never line up. And when they do line up, you need to be very careful of that fact. Just for example, Matthew seven thirteen to 14. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. So most people go towards the gate that leads to destruction. The direction that most people will take is the direction of destruction, not of truth, and not of peace, and not of prosperity as far as a spiritual prosperity. It is the gate of destruction. Another thing is, that the world will hate Christians it is, is just a fact stated by Jesus himself. And when Christians are loved by the world, we, we should beware. We should be very careful. And we must ask ourselves, why are they loved? Listen to this, John 15, 18 to 27. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name. For they do not know the one who sent me. Jesus is saying that the world will never accept you because I, I, you are mine. And they hated me, they will hate you too. And this is another thing that Jesus says 
and will happen in the last days. Uh, let's quickly look at Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verse 9. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. There will be hatred and betrayal, and all nations will hate true Christians. And so when you're looking at a church that is largely accepted by the world, there should be doubts in your mind. And you should wonder and you should think, why is it accepted? And most of the time you will realize that the reason that church is accepted is because that church has accepted the world's narrative. And so the, that, that church, in order to be accepted by the world, they're, in order to be seeker-friendly, so that the world is, is easily comes into the church, actually, they have easily gotten themselves into the world. And they have changed to the point where the world loves them. And that is not the proper direction. Um, Jesus says right out, in the end, they will hate you. So, unfortunately, our proclamation of the gospel, unfortunately, our beliefs will be hated. Do not try to be accepted by the world. It's not possible because our beliefs will be hated by the world. They will not understand it. They will not like it. They will call us bigots. They will call us Bible thumpers. They will call us hateful. And all the while, we are the ones that are going out helping people. Uh, we are the ones going out and we're helping the poor. And we're building hospitals and we're giving to, to, to orphans. And, and they are going to call us hateful. And do not let yourself be be scared of being called hateful oh you know they call christians anti-science like they don't that we don't believe in science and because they call us that we're like oh no let's not talk about evolution oh no let's not talk about the possibility that that vaccines are, are bad for your health and that scientists have made a huge mistake Let's not talk about these things. Let's be quiet because we're scared that the world will hate us. Well, I have news for you. The world will hate us. And, and if you try to be quiet and no longer speak about those subjects and you try to be accepted by the world, well, guess what? You're going to become more like the world. Jesus was never a people pleaser. He never catered his, uh, his teaching to what people wanted to hear. None of the apostles were people pleasers. None of them catered what they were speaking about for the purpose of making people happy. And that is why they were beaten. That is why they were cast out of their homes. That is why they were uh, all persecuted all their lives because people hated them and had to silence them. And, and if they tried to make people happy, then they would become like the world. John 6, 52, 54. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. Uh, Jesus was making a statement that they did not like, uh, that the only way to find salvation was to eat him, to, to accept him to to fall on in his arms and that he is the way the truth and the life and this is what happened john 6 60 to 66 on hearing it many of his disciples said this is a hard teaching who can accept it from this time many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed them jesus lost a lot of followers by what he said he did not try to attract uh, attract people into the kingdom of God. He was not a seeker-friendly uh, speaker. In fact, in Matthew 10, in Mark 10, 21 to 22, he was so hard on the rich young ruler that the, the rich young ruler who was seeking the kingdom of God turned around and left sad because he could not do what Jesus asked him to do. And so Jesus did not twist the truth in order to bring people into the kingdom of God. Um, Mark 10, 21 to 22, Jesus looked at him and loved him. Did you hear that? Jesus loved him, but he told him the truth though. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven and then come and follow me. At, at this, the man's face fell and he went away sad because he had great wealth. 
So Jesus actually, in fact, turned away this man. He could have told him, no problem, just come and follow me. Don't worry about it. You can keep your possessions. But he told him exactly what he needed to hear, exactly what he needed to do. And he told him out of love. And yet, the, the, the outcome of this love was that this man rejected him and he, he just could not do what Jesus asked him to do. We should not cater the truth for people. We need to speak of everything that is written in the Word of God, whether it be hell and the coming punishment, whether it be the fact that uh, homosexuality is bad for society and that it's destructive to the family unit and, uh, and all these things. We, we cannot not be quiet, but we should say these things in love. We're not the haters that they will call us. And just because they will call us haters does not mean that we should stop speaking because we know that we're not haters. We, we do not hate these people. Don't think that the loving thing to do is to be quiet and not talk about these, these, these issues that people get angry about. Don't think that's the loving thing to do. Remember Mark 10, 21 and 22. Jesus looked at this young man and in love he said, this is the one thing that you lack. You need to sell everything and you need to follow me. He said this in love. And, and don't think that trying to be united and trying to make them love you and, and doing everything they tell you so that they will accept you is good for them. It's not good for them. They, we need to stand for truth. They need to know that what they're doing is wrong. And, and no matter what the outcome of that, that, that is what we need to be doing at this time.